I'm Lisa Stone. Thank you for joining us for this edition of Parenting Aces. Welcome to the Parenting Aces podcast. I'm your host, Lisa Stone. Every now and then I get contacted by someone who presents an idea of something that just makes so much sense. And this week's podcast guest did just that. Mark Milne messaged me, oh gosh, uh, a couple months ago, I guess, to tell me about a new program that he had developed, a new scoring system, a new way of running tennis events that just made so much sense. And I was so excited when he agreed to come on the podcast and talk about 3030 tennis. If you're a tennis parent, you know how it is when you make plans to travel to a tournament with your child and either weather intervenes or some other something comes up that makes the tournament director say, we're going to have to go to short scoring. Sorry, your kid's going to play four games and use no ad scoring and whoever wins gets to move on in the tournament and reap the rewards of that, whether it be through ranking points or a trophy or a uh, higher UTR or whatever it is. And it is just so flippin' frustrating when that happens. Well, 3030 is a way around that. And I am just thrilled to have Mark on the podcast to explain to y'all what his concept is, how it works, and how we as a tennis community can help him get this new format approved by the ITF so it can actually be used in tournaments. Just to tell you, I, Mark's from Scotland. He's got a phenomenal accent, so give yourself a minute to get used to his lovely voice and really listen to what he has to say and listen to his call to action at the end of the podcast. I promise you it's worth your time. So sit back and enjoy this week's podcast with Mark Milne. Mark Milne, thanks so much for joining us all the way from Scotland. Ah, hello, Lisa. Yes, thanks very much for having me on your on your podcast. Uh, I'm delighted to be involved. Thank you. Well, we had a few technical issues before we got started, but I think we've worked everything out now. So thank you for your patience with that. I know sometimes uh, when I have guests that are international, we have little technical snafus here and there. But thanks for your patience. No problem. We, we got there, Lisa. <laughs> We did, <laughs> indeed. So I want to just start out by giving you an opportunity to talk about your life in tennis and, you know, your involvement in the sport uh, from childhood. So maybe you can tell our audience a little bit about that. Yeah, basically, I, I, I live in a small town in Scotland uh, called Arbroath. And in 1972, uh, I got hooked on tennis. I remember watching the Ely Nastasi Stan Smith Wimbledon final <laughs> It was a long five-set match, and Stan Smith won. I was actually on holiday with my parents down in Scarborough, and when I came back to Arbroath, there's a local club just around the corner. I went along and joined, and I really just took it from there. I loved the game of tennis. I had a sort of junior uh, game that I played local tournaments, was reasonably successful up to about under 18 and so on. After that, I really just continued to just play for the local club Arbroath in the local leagues, played a few of the local tournaments in towns like Montrose and Nairn and really just en enjoyed tennis. I, I would say I was just a, it was a, it was a, it was a hobby rather. I, I didn't go into it seriously. I, when, when I stopped playing junior events, uh, I went on and studied and I have a career in mechanical engineering. But I've always still continued playing team tennis and just just enjoying tennis, basically. So I, I, I was selected for the county in that, but it's not a high level. But I like to think it was a wee bit better than average, and have played have a fair bit of experience of playing tennis. I was fortunate that it wasn't only tennis that I was reasonably talented at. I was able to play both squash, badminton, table tennis, all to a reasonably high level as well. So in in these days, I would play tennis in the summer and with the weather being in, uh, the way it is in Scotland I then moved indoors and played the squash and the badminton during the winter so I have a varied 
um, experience of racket sports to a, a fairly decent level, I, I would say. And yeah, tennis, tennis is my main passion, Lisa. That's fantastic. I, I love stories like that because, you know, I talk a lot about how tennis is the sport for a lifetime and, you know. Absolutely. Well, I'm, I'm 55 now, so I was just thinking there that it's 45 years, basically, since I joined the club, just a stone throw from my house. And uh, it is for a lifetime. Absolutely. It, it's it's great fun for meeting people. For uh, I still enjoy playing singles, the, the one-to-one battle that you can have. Uh, with people and you win some, you lose some. And uh, no, it's great fun. It keeps you fit. It keeps you mentally active, physically active. And no, the sport is absolutely fantastic. Um, yeah, absolutely. And and I, you and I are poster children for that concept. Uh, we're the same age. Ah, I and, okay. and I started playing actually even younger than you because I came from a tennis family and it's just what you did. Ah, okay, <laughs> so, yeah, okay. No, my, my parents, they played a bit of badminton and it was just really a, a family holiday we had down in Scarborough. There was grass courts, believe it or not, that was just next to the where we were staying and that, that's what started it. We just went along, booked a court for an hour, played around. I think we must have hired rackets and yeah, no, that it gave me the bug and I was possibly fortunate I, I had been born with a bit of a talent. I was reasonably sporty and yeah, it just just went from there basically. So, you know, for a lifetime, absolutely. I'm hoping, God willing, that I will continue to play for a number of years yet. I love it. I love it. So recently you launched something called 3030 Tennis and I really want to dig into the details of that and but before I start asking you a lot of questions, I would love to hear how you came up with the concept and why you came up with the concept. Yeah, no, that's fair. Yeah, I'll answer that, Lisa. Yeah. About two or three years ago, um, I decided that during the winter, I would actually start playing a game called Touch Tennis indoors. Um, you know, the winters are pretty cold here. I'm not that keen to play outdoors. I had previously played squash during the winter for the last 10 years or so, but the person I was playing, we, we stopped playing and I was looking for just something a bit different to do during the winter. So I went back and it, a long time ago, there was such a game called short tennis that you used a small sponge ball that was quite soft. It didn't bounce very high and you had some quite amazing rallies. I used to enjoy playing that, but I, I found out that this touch tennis game had been invented by a, a gentleman down south in England. And what it was, it was a faster version of short tennis. It used a sponge ball that is a lot heavier and a lot denser. So I got together with with a hitting partner, booked a, booked a, it's actually played on a badminton court, which is, you know, a fraction of the size of a tennis court, but the main thing, it was indoors. So I booked weekly this one hour court and we began to play and the scoring system that I used when I first started was the old short tennis oh, wait, scoring. Wait, I lost you. I lost you for a second there, Mark. Huh? So sorry. You said the, the scoring, I lost you there for a second. You said the scoring system and then you cut uh, out. No problem. Okay. I'll, I'll start again, Lisa. <laughs> yeah, the, the, yeah. The scoring uh, system that we started using playing this touch tennis indoors was based on the old short tennis scoring where you basically hit two serves one from each side and you counted one two three four and up to a score of 11 points basically it was it was like the old badminton scoring or the old table tennis scoring but after a few weeks I began to think oh, this isn't really like tennis I prefer to make it feel a bit more like tennis. The actual game itself, the sponge ball was so much quicker, so much faster and you had to hit topspin and, and various things you could come in on your serve and so on. It was, a, it was a, a, a step up from the old short tennis which was a bit slow. It was more designed for under 10 players basically. A lot of the kids in Scotland learnt tennis by playing short tennis so it, it, there was a step change with this new ball. So, yeah, I, I started thinking about the scoring system. I wanted to, within the hour, be able to play, for example, a best of three match. So what I decided was I would start using just the conventional, traditional scoring. 
But what happened was when we used that, me and my hitting partner, we very rarely managed to finish a best of three set match within the hour. It was taking, it was taking more than an hour. And obviously when you book a court indoors, you get the one hour and there's someone coming in the back of you. So it was always a bit frustrating that we were playing a match, which I like to be a best of three sets. It was never being completed. So what I thought was, I remember many years ago, during coaching, it was quite common that the coach would use a 30-30 start to reduce the length of a game, basically start each game at 30 all. And the more research I did, I found that it's still being used and it's very, very popular for coaches to put players through pressure situations, the, you know, the, the big points. The- uh, you're, you're breaking up, ah, Mark, again. No Sorry. Problem. Um, okay, so let's go back. Uh, you said to start with the, uh-huh. oh, to start with the 30-30. That's right, yes. Um, yes, uh, I, I was... Remembering that from way back, coaches as a technique to help players cope with the more pressure points around about 30 all in juice. They, they played sets of tennis where every game started at 30 all, which I've then um, done a bit more uh, digging into it and found out that this is still being used quite commonly and a lot of coaches do like this. It, it makes the, the player more experienced in playing these big points, basically. So we thought, oh, let's, let's try this. Let's, let's see if this shortens the game a bit. So we started doing the 30 all starts and the first thing I found was that the changing of ends the the traditional changing of ends for tennis is obviously you play the first game and then following that you play two games and then change and so on. Yeah. So so using the traditional change of ends, i.e. after the first game, then it's after every two games, with the starting at 30 all, we were changing ends too often, basically. So what I thought was let's try and double up um, rather than changing after one and two games, let's change after two and four games. So, so you still serve alternatively. You know, player A serves the first game, player B play, serves the second game. You then have a change of ends. A then serves, B then serves, A then serves, B then serves, and you change ends again. And we we found that this worked really well. Actually, it, it cut down first of all. The total number of changes per set could only be a maximum of three changes, which is a lot less than a normal, a traditional set of tennis. So that was the first thing we changed. Um, so we, we had the 30 all starts. We changed ends after two and four games. And the other small thing that we decided to change was that when we reached six all, I originally decided that I would try and play just what's called a sudden death golden game to decide the set. Now, this is what's been going on for the last few months, but based on recent feedback I've had, I was all, always had a bit of a niggling doubt about a set that you'd played 12 games could potentially then be decided on just two points. The server at six all could serve two points, win it, and the set was over. And a few people that have been trialing this for me over the last few months have pointed out the same thing. So I have had a rethink. And rather than use this sudden death golden game, I've decided that I'm going to use a, the nine point tie break at six all. This is something that has appeared in the 2018 ITF Rules of Tennis Appendix 5. It's actually used, we'll get on to it, but there are other shorter formats. This The format is a brand Fast 4, and one of the things it uses is it uses the nine-point tiebreak. It's been called the short set 
tie break, but it's basically a tie break that's the best of nine points. The first person to get to five wins that game and the tie break and the set. If it reaches four all, there is a sudden death point to decide the set or the tie break by five points to four. So I've now decided that I've removed the golden game. It was unfair. It was too brutal. It was maybe a bit too radical as well. The nine point tie break definitely gives a better end or a f- more fitting end to a close set of tennis. And that is basically it, Lisa. There are three changes. Every game starts at 30 all. The change of ends, instead of being after one and two, are after two and four games. And there is a nine-point tie break played at six games all. And everything else stays identically the same. There's still the sets to six, lead by two. There's the final set is still lead by two. Um, no tie break in the final set and so on. So yeah, I, I, I then personally was using this on my indoor short tennis, touch tennis court. And it really just developed from there. I began to think, I've really got something here. We're managing to play a best of three set match. Even if it went to three sets, it would still be completed within the hour. We, we only had the odd occasion that it maybe exceeded the hour. But on the whole, on average, a best of three set match could be played within an hour. And we were really enjoying this. It gave you a sort of sense of, yes, we played a match there. You come off the court. You feel as though you've played a tennis match and you could potentially have played three sets. So from that, I was aware, I don't know how big cricket, the sport of cricket in in the world depends on whether the country is involved in cricket or not. And I know in the United States of America, cricket probably isn't too big. It's more baseball. <laughs> Yeah, but no, no, yeah, but no, it's not a big thing. I have the knowledge that cricket has, in the last ten, fifteen years, introduced an abbreviated form of cricket that has made it far, far more exciting. Cricket used to be the game that you know you you didn't see much happening for a long time. The match would maybe last days and so on, and it was beginning to struggle. And this gentleman down in England came up with an idea to speed up, make the match shorter, make it more exciting, make it more fun to watch. And it's revolutionised cricket over the last 10 years. And what they have called their version of cricket, the abbreviated form, is a format called 2020. Now, that format is written, the first 20 is written in letters, T-W-E-N-T-Y, and then all one word, it then includes 2-0 for 20. So hence 2020. And what it was that you don't have to know too much about cricket, but it meant both teams, they had 20 overs to score as many runs as they could. Whereas in the past, there was no limit in the number of overs that were bowled. So this 2020 match now is in, is concluded in a far shorter time frame and there are far more runs and much more excitement. So I began to think, well, 2020 has done this for cricket. It has really revolutionised cricket. The money and the participation, the viewing audiences, um, just as an aside, it, 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 cricket is now actually being looked at as being a possible addition for the 2024 Olympics. Now, before this version of 2020, there would have been absolutely no chance of cricket being a sport that could potentially be included in the Olympic Games. With this version, it's made it that much more exciting. It is now being considered. So that's what 2020 has done for cricket. I began, and when you look at 30, 30 written down for the start of a tennis match, it could be brought into the same family and that's where my 30-30 comes from. The first 30 again is written in letters T-H-I-R-T-Y and the 30 at the end is the digits 3-0 so all one word 30-30 and I, I thought that really says what this version of tennis is all about if you say 30-30 to somebody in the future, my hope is 
that they will immediately say, oh yeah, that is the game of tennis, the abbreviated shorter format of tennis, where games start at 30 all, and it produces shorter, more exciting, more intense, and what I found is more unpredictable sets of tennis. I found that when you start the game at 30 all, there is far better chance of breaking serve. Obviously, we're maybe speaking about the higher level or a decent level of tennis. Holding serve happens more often than not at a reasonable level of tennis. You see sets going one all, two all, three all, four all, five all, six all, tie break. When you start at 30-30, there is a far bigger chance, far greater chance of breaking serve because you actually only need to win one point to get to juice and then you're in. Then it, then it's, you know, a, 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 it's not a toss up, but you've got a better chance of breaking serve if you can get to juice basically. That's the other point I should mention. The juice points and the add points are still included. There, there is a shorter format out at present that is being widely used that does not include the add points. When you get to juice, right? Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. Sudden yeah. death point, no Absolutely. add scoring. Everyone, I can't stand everyone it. I've I spoken it. to does not <laughs> like it. I don't like it. They don't like it. It's. I went actually down to London to see the. The, the tour finals, the ATP tour finals, and the doubles match uh, was there. It was held in the O2, and the O2 in London holds about a capacity 18,000 people. For the doubles final, the best two couples in the world, the stadium only had about 2,000 people in it, and they were using the no ads, mm. and it was such an anticlimax. A game would build to juice, and then they would then decide what side to serve from, game over. It was a disaster. It's it's just doing nothing for tennis. And I, I'm glad to hear that you don't like it either. That is one of the things that my, I wanted my 3030 to maintain as many of the traditions of traditional tennis. And having and playing the ad points is a must for me, as is playing sets to six games. The, I was away to mention the other two shorter formats that are now actually included in ITF rules of tennis. Uh, I'm not sure. I think it has hit America, but Tennis Australia over the recent years have been promoting a Fast Four format. Their, their brand name is called Fast Four. And the yes. four rules, it's Fast Four because they've changed four rules, are the sets out of four games. If it goes to three games, all they play this nine-point tie break. They play no ads and they play no lets. Now, from my experience of speaking to people, a lot of people are, are not too happy with it. Sets to four games is not tennis as we know it and as you've said playing not playing the ads is not really tennis either so I, I wanted to ensure my 30-30 format included both of these which I think is essential going forward for any format of tennis the, these traditions have to be maintained yep yes and and yes I agree and and I don't know if you're aware but college tennis in the states plays a uh, six game set, no ad scoring, no lets, uh, plays a traditional tie break at six all and uh, the doubles play My goodness, one yeah. set goodness to me. six. That's it. With no um, ads. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, and right. So, um, you know, I'm not a fan. I, I do have to say that a lot of the college players that I speak with actually do like the no ad scoring because they are playing so many matches during the season that they're Shorter happy matches, to have, yeah. Yeah. you know, kind of a shortened format. Yeah, um, you know, in absolutely. hopes that it's going to that, that, That's the other reason for 30-30. I, I want so. it to be shorter sets. We're seeing all over, not just at the top level, but even at club level, matches are lasting too long. And at, at the top level, physically, the players are really having to get themselves so fit to be able to play so long matches. They're then playing the long matches and they, they really are struggling to lengthen their careers, I think, if, if, it, if it is ongoing. 
So the shorter format, I, I think, it's an alternative format. It will never replace the traditional scoring, but I think there possibly requires to be an alternative shorter format for that reason, to cut down on injuries, just to keep matches shorter. And I found that, yeah, the 30-30, a set takes in the region of 20 minutes. So three sets and now are, if you decide that your match is to be a best of five sets, it would be an hour and a half in general, not much longer than that, which I think is actually quite exciting to, to be able to go on and play a best of five sets match in an hour and a half. There's going to be a lot more ups and downs during the five sets. I actually have a guy, we'll go on to the trialing in a minute, but I have a guy in Colombia who is a tournament organiser. He organises tournaments for over 40s, over 45s and so on. And he runs about seven or eight events a year. And he was very interested in what he's decided to do is one of these events, he's going to use the 30-30 format, but he's going to advertise it as a Grand Slam 30-30 event where the matches are actually going to be best of five sets using the 30-30 format. And he was quite excited about this, being able to advertise a club tournament, or a bit more than a club tournament, a regions tournament that was to be Grand Slam, best of five sets, because it's perfectly feasible to play a tournament with a best of five sets where the matches will only last around about a maximum of an hour and a half, basically. So uh, that, that that's where I'm coming from there. Yeah, that's pretty exciting. You know, for, for the Parenting Aces audience, one application that I see for this format is when yes, our junior yes. tournaments get into rain delays. And now what happens a lot is they start the sets either at two all or they yeah. start, you know, they play a four game set some kind of way, whether they start at love, love and go to four or they start at two all and go to six. Um, and, you know, as you mentioned with the fast four, it, it's just, I mean, you can imagine if you've taken the time to travel to a tournament and to yeah. have a match be decided in four games is, uh, it's really disheartening for the kids. And there are players who are slow starters and, you know, it's, I, I get that they have yeah. to learn how yeah. to, yeah. <laughs> how to start strong and finish strong, but, but when we're talking about junior events and, and development of these young players, why are we putting them in a situation that rewards the kid yeah. that, you know, is just getting off to a quick start and taking control quickly instead of allowing a kid time to figure out how to play their way into the match. And so I love the whole 30, 30 idea as an alternative to those short scoring sets that USTA uses when... Yeah, no, I, I can't agree with you more. Yeah, I had whatever. just recently found out that yeah, sometimes you do the match starting at two all, and it's it's just, it's not, it doesn't feel right to me to be able to do that. And that is the beauty of this. The the, the sets are shorter. You, you can play more sets in the same length of time. And what I have found as well is that when, when you play a 30-30 set or match, best of three, you still come off the court and you feel as though you've played a proper tennis match or a traditional tennis match. You don't come off having 1-4, one, 1-4-3. Four, one, four, uh, you could come off having 1-6-3, one, 1-6-6-4 six, 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 or something. It, it actually still feels and sounds and looks like a traditional tennis match, but it's shorter. So, no, I, 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 I think it could potentially, yeah, for rain delays or what, what I, I see as well. Some of the tournaments use round robin where you maybe have a, a group of four or five or even six kids. Yes. You can get so many more matches played in the same time if you use this format, which gives the juniors a chance to play against a far, far more players than they would normally, you know, they, they could, if they had a group of six, they could play five other people in that, in that group, just playing, say, one set, and it gives them a far more varied approach, because every player has different styles of play and so on, and 
to, to have that opportunity to play against someone and complete it in a shorter space of time uh, is a big advantage as well. You could play my, my local club, the coach there has introduced it to his juniors and every, every week they turn up now. They, they want to do it at the end of a coaching session. They could maybe play a set in 20 minutes against someone or He's organising round robin tournaments where, yeah, you get to play against so many different players in the same length of time rather than wasting time playing just a few players, basically. So the, the shorter format, yeah, can definitely work in situations like that as well. And I don't know if, if universal tennis is, you know, becoming popular in Scotland yet. Yes, um, yes, it's becoming yes. becoming very popular here, universal tennis ratings, but... And I I was just thinking, you know, from their perspective, using their algorithm, it's got to be more favorable for them to to have scores that are six. Yeah, I would have thought so. Absolutely. Or two or whatever. Um, Yeah. And I'll be interested to hear from them if if, you know, they've taken a look at this and how it's working with their existing algorithm and you know, how accurate it, it is in terms of their ratings. Uh, it's, it's Again, it seems to me it's I, I would have thought way so, more yes, accurate. Yeah. I, I have been in touch before. since I've gone on this 30-30 crusade. I have been in touch with a, an Irish gentleman called Dave Miley. I, I think uh, he's, he's quite... Yes, I was just about to say that I was having a flick he through your podcast, podcast today yes, and I, I did yes. see that. And he yeah. he's a guy that has put me on to some people who are very innovative and are possibly going to help me with trialing it. But yeah, he's part of the UTR crusade as well. And it certainly looks and sounds fantastic to me. It, it yes. makes sense, basically, really. So in in the UK, as far as I know, it's beginning to get rolled out. There, there is a progress tour that's being organised for the first time in 2018 that is based on the UTR ratings and so on. And it's just beginning to get rolled out in 2018. That's the first I've seen of it in Scotland slash England, basically. But it's it's definitely growing. And yeah, playing sets to six uh, makes a far more sense um, for, for that system as well, yeah. And you would end up with more data as well, I would think, because yeah, absolutely. you could play best of three matches well, and you, you get good data from that. Right. Yeah. I, I mean, it just, from, from all points of view, it seems that, uh, starting at 30 all versus playing just to four, uh, is a much better way to shorten matches when it's necessary to shorten matches. And again, and, and as you've pointed out, no. it, this is not, a format to Correct. be used all the time. It's not to replace traditional scoring, but, but there are so many people that are up in arms over the short scoring that's occurring at these junior tournaments. And I, you know, I'll be anxious okay. to hear from my audience yeah. what everyone thinks of this starting. Each <laughs> I hope so too. Yeah. And, I'm very you know, interested. I'm hoping people will comment on, uh, on the podcast. Fantastic, yeah, well, yeah. I'll definitely pass that information on to you, Mark. And, you know, I, so, so what's happening with 3030 tennis? Um, do, have you gone through any sort of official, um, sanctioning process? Okay, the, the there is a bit of a story, LTA, I suppose. You have time to, to take this on board. The, 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 it, it started obviously when I came up with the idea of 3030 and the brand, uh, starting games at 30 all and the branding. So what I did do was if you go to the ITF's website, there is an application form that you can apply to amend the rules of tennis. So, let me see. Maybe take a step back, actually. My first thought was that I would go to Judy Murray. Obviously, being Scottish, I was keen for the invention or the creation mm-hmm. to have a Scottish um, slant to it, basically. So I spoke to Judy Murray initially just by email. She liked the idea, and I was hoping that she would possibly manage to help me. But after a few months, she eventually let me know that she was – too busy with many other projects. She has her mishits and various other things that she's really involved in at the grassroots level. But what she did do was she told me to get in touch with the ITF Rules of Tennis Committee uh, and see where it took me from there. So what I did was I just went on to the website, did a contact us, and eventually got put through to um, a gentleman called Stefan Franson, who is the 
Rules of Tennis Committee for the ITF. I think he was the chairman and so on. And I, I let him know that I had this idea. Uh, could have let him know about it, but I wanted to keep it quiet. I'd, I had, I didn't want anyone to sort of pinch this idea before it got out there. So he said to me, oh, yeah, okay, send it to me and I'll see what I think. So I, I put down, it was a, just a very basic 1A4 page explaining what, what I'd come up with. It went to him and within a week he came back and said, do you mind if I then go and speak to a colleague of mine? And I said, I no problem, no problem. So he went away and spoke to a colleague of his and he came back and said, yeah, what we'd like you to do is go through the official channel and complete the application to amend the rules of tennis so that it was to go through the, the, the correct channels. So this I did. I, I went online, downloaded the forum. Fairly simple. You just put in what rules you were looking to change, give some sort of explanation, why you were wanting to change it and so on. Sent it off. So the next thing I heard was that yes, they had liked it and they were going to discuss 3030 at the Rules of Tennis Committee meeting held during the Paris, the, the French Open in Paris last June. So this duly happened Happened. And about two weeks later, I, I was trying to get in touch. I was obviously interested to find out how it had gone. I eventually received an email from a gentleman at the LTA. Uh, his name uh, escapes me just now. But he came back and said, yes, we'd like the 3030 idea, but we're not going to forward it on to the board for approving for the main reason that there are already two other shorter abbreviated versions of tennis within the rules of tennis. In in the rules of tennis at Appendix 5, there are a list of alternative rules that can be used, things like the no ads and the no lets and so on. And within this Appendix 5, they already had the basics for Fast 4 and they also had the match tie break to 10 points. And these were deemed to be two shorter abbreviated formats and they weren't keen to have any more. So I, 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 I sort of, well, I went, okay, fair enough. You've, you've got two there, but I actually believe 3030 is better from my experience of what I've been hearing about the fast four rules and also about the match tie break which they're using in doubles quite a lot to decide as a third set decider. I believe my 30-30 is better, but I couldn't get anywhere with my argument. So what I said was, okay, I'm going to go away now. I'm going to tidy up 30-30. I'm going to formalize it. I'm going to get a website. I'm going to go out and I'm going to get it trialed and I'm going to get feedback from as many people as I can throughout the world. And I'm following this. If the feedback's good, I will come back to you with a reapplication and let you know what I've done. So it was basically left at that. So I spent about six months getting a website up to speed, various, you know, things sorted out. And it was only really just at the start of the year, the end of last year, that I felt I was in a position to then go out globally to ask people, tell them about my 3030 idea and ask them to trial it. So basically just through social media, you know, Facebook, Twitter, and mainly LinkedIn, that, that's why I think I managed to make contact with you, Lisa. You, you can target tennis people all over the world very, very easily yes. through LinkedIn. And yeah, I, I've had an amazing response. What, what happened is I put out an invite. They join. I then explain to them what I'm looking for. I'm looking for trialing of it. Go to my website and so on. And I would then like feedback. Well, since January, I've had just less than a hundred testimonials from people saying, this is a really good idea. Uh, it's something we've actually used before. We, we've used it. It's amazing the number of people have said, yeah, we actually use this. We have done for years. But what all I've done is I've just taken it tidied it up a bit, formalized it, and turned it into a potential match format. So that that's why I think it can potentially work, because it's been used before. So yeah, at the moment, I'm just contacting hundreds and hundreds of people daily, weekly, receiving feedback, adding this feedback to my testimonials page on my website for people to then go and look. And yeah, trialing is ongoing. Um, obviously, in this part of the world, 
with the winter and the, the weather, tennis isn't quite kicking in in the same scale on all the summer months. So some of the people that have come back to say that they're going to trial it are going to be when the season kicks in, maybe the outdoor season kicks in, April, May and so on. So the way I see it is this trialing will be ongoing for six months, nine months, 12 months. And I'm going to build up a dossier. Hopefully, certainly the testimonials and feedback I've had has been very encouraging that I'm hoping to then go back with a reapplication and say, look, this is 30-30 now. What do you think sort of style? Um, and I know the ITF are cons- still considering different options. They, they ran the next gen ATP tour finals for the best under 21 players in the world. It was held in Milan in November where they trialled a number of different changes, but the main changes to the scoring were they were using the fast four format, sets to four games, tie breaks to three. And I, I've seen polls and various things right. online and it, it's not gone down well with a lot of people. But what the ITF, ATP are saying is that they are currently analysing what went on during that event and they will come to some sort of conclusions in the not too near future not too distant future on how they think it it was um you know from the people how what people thought of it basically so they they are obviously still considering you know it's it's not set mm-hmm. in stone that yeah the fast four or the tie break uh, to 10 points is the best so my my dream i i honestly believe that 30 30 works better than both of these systems and yeah that that is my goal at the moment to gain this feedback. If all this trialing obviously has to be done unofficially. There's no ranking points. There's nothing like that. That can't be done. The, the, if you're using rules, they have to be included in the ITF rules of tennis handbook, basically. So before anything officially can be done in terms of playing 30-30 events, it has to be accepted and you know officially recognized by the ITF. So that that is my plan for 3030 at the moment and I just have to get out there. I, I need as many people as possible to trial it and get back to me and say, yeah, we played a tournament, we played this, we did this and just comments, you know, based on the last three months, that is why I've changed the sudden death game at six games all. Mm-hmm. It became evident, two or three people pointed out to me that really to play 12 games and then potentially end the set with just two points, it's, it's not really fair. And I have to totally agree. I, I always had a bit of a niggling, had a niggling feeling about it. And I'm now happy that based on that feedback, I have decided to change that, but everything else, the changing ends, the, the, you know, just everything starting at 30, 30, it's nothing new. It, it has been used for years. All I've done is I formalized it and I believe it works. And yeah. Well, so, so let me put a charge out to my audience that if this intrigues you, that you go to your club or your child's coach or Absolutely. a group of your child's That's friends it. and organize a round robin using this format and then, and then contact Mark and let him know how it went, you know, um, have the kids contact Mark, have the coaches contact Mark and Mark's info will be in the show notes. So you'll be able to um, just click on the link there to send him an email. But I think, you know, our audience could, could no, really, I'd really appreciate that, Lisa. That, that's exactly what I'm looking Mark for. I need as many people ITF. to try it. And yeah, hope, hopefully, I, I don't mind getting bad feedback because that's the way you learn, but hopefully mainly good feedback. And yeah, it's, it really is my, my experience so far. The kids around the corner at the local club, they absolutely love it. It's so much more exciting. Every second point is a game point. Every point really means something. None of this starting at love all or, or having games that are at 40 love and you play a meaningless point every single point actually means something and the score in the set 
ticks along so much quicker. That's what modern youngsters want these days. They're, they're not willing to have a slow burner, one all, two all, after 20 minutes sort of stuff. The, it's a new mindset. The whole dynamics change. The, the, the game score ticks on quicker and they, they love it. They love it. And I'm hoping that other people, whether it's juniors, adults, uh, or whatever, uh, my, my local tennis Tayside leagues, they have been investigating ways to shorten matches. Match nights, uh, club match nights against other clubs have been ongoing and have not changed since I was born. And they found that this- I, I, bef- exactly before that, and there's been a mood for change. The number of teams <laughs> entering, that. the number <laughs> of players willing that. to give up a whole <laughs> evening, has been dropping off quite dramatically over the last few years. And they've been looking at different options for reducing the length of a match night. And I went along to their committee meeting and presented thirty thirty. They had already decided for the forthcoming season that instead of playing six sets during an evening, they were only going to play four sets. But I, 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 I'm still hopeful that they will still consider potentially you could still play the same match. You play three couples against three couples of doubles. You play two sets against each couple. So each couple plays six sets. I think, I think you could still play six sets using the 30 30 format and it would reduce the length of the match. It's what they're looking for. And it would still feel, look and sound like normal tennis. But so far they've decided to stay with the traditional scoring, but reduce the number of uh, sets. Uh, yeah. Couples will play two sets against each other and then one set against each other. And I'll be interested to see the feedback on that. But just, just for simple examples like that, if you're looking to reduce the length of a match, a club match, this format will work because people are not willing to give up the same time. I remember years ago when I was a teenager, I would go away and play a, a, a match that had three rounds of best of three sets. So you could potentially be involved in a match that you played nine sets in an afternoon. These days are gone. That, that, that just doesn't happen now. Things have changed and people want or don't have the same time. So that's where I think it can really work. Well, yeah. And, and I mean, not to mention, you know, playing nine full sets in a day for a, a developing junior player. Yes, yeah, it has moved on. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I started it's, with a wooden it's racket. Tough. And, and the game has become so physical that it was slightly it's, different. It's very difficult. For them. <laughs> yeah, well, me too. Me too, Mike. Yeah, my Chrissy Everett autograph. Um, well, I also, I, you know, I'm thinking just in terms of, um, from a selfish perspective, I, we have a huge league here in Atlanta where I live called the Atlanta Lawn Tennis Association, ALTA. It's actually the largest recreational yeah, league in the U.S. And, uh, I think I'm going to forward yeah, I this did. podcast to, the powers that be at all to see if yeah. you know no, I have, maybe I've get some, had, yeah, I've had some people tournaments coming back going saying, you know, or, can I organize you know, a league? With, uh, with where can I play 30. a tournament of this yeah, sort of stuff? Really like, there, there is good feedback that people are reading it and saying, hey, I think this might work. So, no, I'd really appreciate that, Lisa. That, that really would be fantastic. One one possibly getting towards the end of what, what I like about it as well is that the transition between playing traditional tennis and 30-30 yeah, okay, no wait, you, you broke what up again. I, what you I do like again. about so, sorry, the format so is said the, what I like the transition about it is, and then you between <laughs> playing traditional tennis and playing 30-30 tennis is seamless. Whether you're a player or a spectator or an official, it's absolutely seamless. You don't really have to think about it. It's the the the. the the, the rules are so similar to the existing rules that all you've really got to remember is that you start at 30 all. And yeah, that's the point. What I like to do is the score it traditionally is shouted 30 all at the start of a game. With this format to differentiate it, I like to see the score 30 30 shouted out, called out at the start of a game. That then differentiates it. If someone comes along and they're watching, they hear somebody shouting 30-30 at the start of each game. It lets them know that it's a 30-30 format match rather than the 30-all. But yeah, that's all really you've got to remember. You've got to remember the changing of ends is doubled. So the first two games, both players actually serve first 
before then changing ends, which I quite like as well, because obviously at the moment uh, you serve one game or you, you practice your serves, one server serves and you swap ends. So the second player is serving at the end that he hasn't practiced serving. At, with the 30-30, both players will actually serve a game before the first changeover. And then following that, yeah, you, you serve still alternatively, but two after four games you change. And yeah, if you reach six all, it's a tie break to nine point, a nine point tie break. It's simple, absolutely simple. You can change from watching, playing or officiating from one version to the other without having to think too much. You, you will see if you watch any of the fast four or the tie break, Tens, the match, the match tie break to ten points. The players are still having to think what what's happening here. Oh God, is what do we do at three all? Is is that game? Or it's it's because it's so it's foreign to what they've been doing for ten, fifteen, twenty years. Thirty thirty, <laughs> you could have two players on the court within two minutes of explaining right. the rules, and they will play a thirty thirty match without having to think about it. <laughs> Yeah, no, I love that too. It's perfect, especially for those of us who, um, because of whatever factors, that, that I'm, I'm not going to yeah. use the age word, but that um, happens more often to have me trouble now as well. keeping track of the score, <laughs> even though I've been doing it my whole life. Yeah. Um, well, you know, interestingly, I think it was USTA that introduced, oh, I don't even remember which league it was here, introduced a new tiebreaker format a couple years ago called the Komen tiebreaker. And I, as many times as I wound up playing that thing, I never could remember the rules. And it it had to do with, it, it, it made sense for doubles because the way you changed ends, the each person continued to serve on the yeah, same father, end yeah, that they yeah, had no. been serving on the whole match. So that made yeah. sense that, that's to me. That's what happens with change. But I Absolutely. never could really. keep track of, oh my gosh, what am I doing? What side am I on? I don't know where to go. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. So this is very simple. All all you have to remember is instead yeah. of starting at love just, just love, you start you, at you 30, hit, 30 I, You hit the nail on the head there. there. You said a word there that has been the motto for well, a while. If you oh, keep yeah. things simple, you can't go wrong. And this is simple. I, I've been the same throughout the way I play tennis, the way I played squash, the way I... Uh, work uh, as an engineer. Simple is best. As soon as you try and change and complicate things too much, there's a problem. Simple is the word in a nutshell, Lisa. I thank you for saying it. Yeah, well, sure. I'm glad I stumbled on that word for you. Um, thank you for coming on and explaining 3030 Tennis to us. And we'll yeah. have links to your website. App- appendix um, I will five, also yes. include a link Within to the, the room, ITF it's appendix rules of tennis. Five, and correct, in yes, towards the end. Particular page 25, five I think. I haven't memorized. <laughs> appendix 5. <laughs> well, I, there will be a link to that in the show notes as well, in case any of my listeners would like to read that in detail. And um, again, let me put the charge out to the Parenting Aces audience. Talk to your coach, talk to your kid, talk to your friends, try and organize some 30-30 matches or round robins or even full tournaments and send your feedback to Mark and let him know what you think of it because – if you're like I am, I used to hate those short scoring tournaments where we would show up and it would rain the whole first day and then you're playing to four and blah, I just used to, it, it would just make me cringe. And if we can find a way to shorten the matches while preserving most of the traditional aspects of tennis scoring, which 3030 tennis seems to do, why not use that instead? And gosh, wouldn't it be awesome for our kids if we could get this format to be used in the case of rain delays as opposed to the one that our governing body is currently using? So um, parents, you can help. Coaches, you can help. Let's all uh, join the bandwagon here and see if we can't help Mark get these rules approved by the ITF. Yep. And and I, I'm really anxious to hear UTR's input on this as well. I'm, I'm happy that Absolutely, you're talking to yeah. Dave, Mark, and Dave uh, really seems to yeah, be an influential character over at UTR these days. And 
you know, he's a good guy. And, yeah, and fantastic, he's very Lisa. I thank so, you for that. Uh, I, I truly believe yeah, that. Yeah, so I'm looking forward to seeing where this goes. I hope you'll keep us posted. Us, basically, as an alternative. And yeah, I, I really appreciate your help. Thanks very much. Thank you. And to my audience, thank you so much for tuning in. And we'll catch you next time on Parenting Aces. I'm Lisa Stone, and you've been listening to the Parenting Aces podcast. For tennis parents, by a tennis parent. If you like what you've heard, please subscribe to us and write a review on iTunes. For more information on navigating the junior and college tennis journey, please visit us online at parentingaces.com. Thanks for tuning in and sharing us with your tennis community.